Good morning. We welcome you to worship this morning. It's our privilege to join together in this time. And as we come here, we come to meet with the Father, and to sit at his feet and experience him and encounter him and be blessed by his presence. Today we're continuing our sermon series, um, Inheritance, Our Spiritual Riches. And today we're talking about holiness and what that means for us. Jamie Alexander, and it's my privilege to welcome you here. I invite you to join with me as we pray. Father, you are a loving God, and you're faithful to us. This morning as we gather here, we ask you to anoint us with the power of your presence, to meet our needs, to encourage us in your ways, and to reveal to us really what does it mean to be holy as you are holy. So Father, prepare hearts now for this time of worship and speak faithfully to us. For we offer ourselves to you. And it's in the loving name of your Son, our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. And together we say, Amen. I'm Jan Lowe, Minister of Congregational Care. So happy to see everyone here this morning. If you're a guest with us today, we just want you to know how pleased we are that you're worshiping here with us. And if you are a guest here for the first time, we have some information that we would like to share with you. The way you can help us make that happen before you leave here this morning, please give us your name and address. You can do that in the narthex at the horseshoe-shaped desk out there, uh, or you can do it by signing the attendance pad here in, in the church sanctuary. Uh, once we have your name and address, later this week, someone will stop by your home. They will not be there to visit, but just to say thank you for worshiping with us. They will leave with you a mug, and that mug is going to be filled with information that tells about the many ministries and the many ways that we have in this church to serve our Lord, to serve people in our community and beyond, and to serve one another. I hope that sounds good to you. In the meantime, we ask that everyone enjoy the fellowship that is in this place today. It was great to be standing out there in the narthex this morning and see so many new faces coming into the church. And we just hope that this is just a, a very good experience for you this morning. We also want to say hello to the people that are watching us on uh, the television stations that are watching us over the internet. And we're just glad to have everyone join together here in worship this morning. We do have attendance pads. I hope that they've been passed this morning. If someone new has come into the row that you're in, pass them one more time. When we see your signature, we know that you were here, but it also helps us to figure out who wasn't able to be here. And when we can do that, it helps us to, be, to stay better in touch with our entire church family. So thank you for helping us with that. If you will open your bulletins to ministry opportunities and events, I've got a few that I'd like to cover with you quickly. <laughs> And the first one that I'd like to start with is the Wesley Series Concert, which is going to be happening this afternoon at 3 o'clock right here in our sanctuary. So we hope that if you have the time, uh, please come and enjoy yourself this afternoon at 3. Uh, this Thursday at noon, please join us if you can. We are going to be welcoming Joseph Zogar, who is a videographer for the Liberian United Methodist Church. And he is, has put together a presentation that will tell us all about the West African Ebola crisis. And this is something we need to know about, something that, uh, that our hearts need to be able to turn to. So if you can, come at noon. We're going to have a potluck. We really want to make him feel welcome. So come if you can and uh, stay for that presentation that he is going to make for us. Mountain of food. If uh, Marianne can come up and just share that with us, please. a picture of what it can look like again this year. Good morning all and I would like to say when I was a teacher I would see some children come to school and were hungry and I always thought no one should be hungry in this land of plenty that we live in and now they get breakfast at school, lunch at school, snack packs are provided but then there's still summer and other times when people in our community and our church are trying to provide meals for them. 
Well, this is a chance we have each May, our congregation at this church dedicates our mission to the month of Mountain of Food. We build a mountain of canned goods, rice, and other non-perishable items to be given to food banks in the area. We don't have room in our church to have a food bank. <laughs> We've used up all our space, and, and it's uh, important that we help provide food for those that are in need in our community. Helping Hands and Care and Share and Gravit are just two of the places we take food from our mountain of food. And we don't take it. They come and pick it up, excuse me. And uh, they get a lot of people there that need help. And so the portion of the food we purchase goes to them. The program's easy to help with. In your bulletin today, you should have found one of these. It's a little order form for our mountain of food this year. And you'd find um, an easy way to do it. You can, of course, some people do, buy one of everything. And this year, the total for everything on the 11 uh, purchases would be at $191.50. That's over $8 cheaper this year than it was last year. I couldn't believe it when I saw the prices. But anyway, you can then also just choose some items that you want to purchase, or you can just give a donation, and then we'll uh, order the materials that we need. We try to balance out so we give all the food banks the same kind of uh, food, same number of purchases if possible. The missions team always helps in this project, like Chet. He'll be a driver for picking up with his truck, go down and pick up cases for, of the food for us. And then we bring it up here, he brings it up here, and then Marion Corns and I try to uh, unload it when Chet helps, and we put it in the, either in the narthex or in Becker Hall, four mountain of food stacks, like that, <laughs> hopefully. And then uh, if we need more helpers, then other members from the team come to help too. Uh, Mona and Ralph Johnson always help come and make sure that we get the foundation for the mountains just right so that nothing falls over. That's important too. <laughs> we don't want anyone to come close to our mountain and get hurt in some way, and that won't happen with Ralph and Mona's help. And uh, we really feel this mission is extremely important and appreciate all that you do to fund this project as it supplies basic needs that are essential to everyone at any age. Last year, our congregation exceeded our expectations by raising over $6,000 for this project. The impact we had on hunger was really impressive. Unfortunately, the need is still very great and this is one way we can fulfill our mission, be the church, by doing what we are called to do. So thank you for doing what you can to support this mission, and we'll keep building that, that mountain all the month of May. The United Methodist Center has two things that are coming up. Uh, the first one is Pancake Day, and believe it or not, that's this Friday at 6.30 in the morning, so if you haven't gotten your tickets, Please buy your tickets from any of the United Methodist Men and plan to come this Friday. Also, the United Methodist Men are hosting a Ladies Appreciation Night. That's going to be on Wednesday, May 13th, and you can buy tickets for that uh, before and after any of the services today, or you can get them in the office. So we hope that you'll participate in that as well. The last thing I want to tell you about is that next Sunday after the last service, we are going to have lunch with the pastors, and we try to do that from time to time so that people who uh, just have an interest, maybe you've been coming to the church for a while, you'd like to know more about the church or you'd like to be able to visit with the pastors, uh, please come and do just that. We provide a lunch, and uh, our Wesley Shepherd Group is the one that hosts that lunch, and we hope that you will come and just visit with the pastors. Take some time to learn a little bit more about the church, and, and we will be glad to visit with you during that time. Thank you very much, and God bless.
Will you join with me now in our congregational prayer? Let us pray. Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart. It is in my heart that my hopes are born and your love is revealed. So take my heart and mold it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours. Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart. In your name I pray. Amen. All the time. All the time. God is good in the newness of this day and the smiles on your faces. There may be some new folks around you that you have not met before because they've been away or this is um, the first time or one of the first times that they've been with us. Greet those around you in the warmth of God's love.
This morning's first scripture lesson is from the, gospel, from the letter of Peter, 1 Peter 1, 14 through 16. I will be reading from the Common English Bible Translation. So therefore, let us together listen to the word of God. Don't be conformed to your former desires, those that shaped you when you were ignorant. But as obedient children, you must be holy in every aspect of your lives, just as the one who called you is holy. It is written, you will be holy because I am holy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The ushers would come forward at this time. We will continue in worship by presenting our tithes and offerings. As we come to this time, may we give back joyfully from the blessings that God has poured out upon us, knowing that every dollar that is given goes to help the ministry and the mission of First United Methodist Church, Bella Vista.
Almighty God, we are so thankful that we get to play a part in your kingdom, in your ministry, in your mission. As we come now to this time where we give back to you, we do so joyfully and thankfully from all that you have blessed us with and given to us, that we can come back to you, that we can say yes to you and yes to your ministry, yes to bringing your kingdom here upon this earth. Help us to be good stewards of all that you have given us, all that you have blessed us with and gifted to us. May we use that to glorify you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. We have come to the time where we celebrate in the joys and the concerns of our church family. Um, we have many joys. There are many new faces out there this morning. A number of you are returning um, after illness or, or travel, um, and we are thankful for your return. And there are several of you who are brand new faces, maybe the first, maybe the second or third time, but we are so thankful for those of you, all of you who are here um, this morning. Uh, we're thankful for a clean church this morning, and I know a number of you have sore muscles. Um, as a result of that, know that God will heal those muscles. That's how our bodies were made, and so um, be, uh, be hopeful in that. We're thankful this morning uh, we have three confirmands um, who will be confirmed at the, um, the 930 service. Their names are Jessica Baldwin, Theo Hamron, and Brittany May, and uh, we should be able to, uh, to meet them at the end of this service. 
We're thankful for those whose health is improving. Breen Bladen had knee surgery this week at Mercy Hospital, and um, she should have moved to Highlands yesterday. She was expecting that to happen, so uh, we're uh, expecting to uh, be able to uh, visit with her at Highlands. And if you get a chance to be able to, uh, to go over and see her as well, please do so. We're, we're thankful for Dwayne Pomerenke, who left this service last week in an ambulance. Um, thankfully, uh, the testing that, um, that uh, was done um, uh, still allowed him to be able to go home. He is home at this time. So, again, if you're able to touch base with, uh, with the Pomerenkes, please, please do so. We do have concerns. Um, uh, late last week, um, Dale Veach was taken to Mercy. He was spent some time in ICU, but he is in a regular care room at this point. He is suffering from complications of pneumonia. And also, last week, Charlie Corns, Sunday afternoon, went to VA again with pneumonia. And he is still in VA and expects to be there until the middle of the week. So lift all these folks and their families and loved ones in your prayers um, as you uh, pray throughout the week. Continue also to lift up Lois Wakefield, who is now at Ashley House in rehab, and Eudine, U Eunice Truman, who is at Jamestown, also in rehab. The church we are praying for this week is Highland Christian Church, which is over on Forest Hills Drive. I'll lift up their pastors, their congregation, and the ministries that they provide within our Bella Vista community. Know also that there will be a complete prayer list at the, uh, the back of the, the um, worship service uh, as you exit today, and uh, please pick up one of those to use in your prayer time throughout the week. And now continue in an attitude of prayer as we join together in our prayer song. Holy and redeeming God, God who leads us and calls us and walks with us all of our days, Lord, only you are holy. There is none like you. And yet you call us out of our darkness and into your holiness. You call us to be as you created us to be to walk with you, to take time to be with you, to be your salt and your light into a world that needs your presence. Forgive us, Lord, when we do not hear the cries of the needy and when we turn our backs on those who are hungry or homeless or grieving or lonely or sick or in need of our help in any way. Help us, Lord, to hear your voice and to follow. Lord, we pray for those who are sick, who are hospitalized, who are in rehab. Help us to respond to their need as you would have us do. We pray for those who are hungry, and we are thankful that we are able to help that hunger in our combined efforts in events like Mountains of Food. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. And this day, we especially pray for the people of Nepal, whose lives have been shattered by the devastation of a terrible earthquake. We pray for those first responders who are that there even now. And we pray for the families of those who have died and those who are missing. We pray for those who have lost their homes and their means of supporting their families. Help them to know, Lord, that you are with them. We are thankful that we're able to help 
if in only a small way, through our United Methodist Committee on Relief that works on site to be your hands and your feet. Remind us, Lord, of the holiness that you call us to as we celebrate the baptism and confirmation of Jessica and Theo and Brittany, the newest members of your family. Help us to remember our baptisms and our confirmation and to renew our pledge to follow you in love and grace and mercy. To reach out to the lives of others here in Bella Vista, in Nepal, and in places around the world. And now in our unity, may we join together in the prayer which Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Well, last Sunday, we began a new sermon series called uh, Inheritance, Our Spiritual Riches. We're going to continue that today. Last week, we thought about those people that had made a mark for faith in our life and, and how we, in turn, have the responsibility of carrying on what has been offered to us through faith and sharing that and living into that gift that we have. So today we're going we're gonna to go a little step further. We're talking about pursuing holiness. You know, it was John Wesley who coined the phrase, holiness, um, cleanliness is next to godliness. So in our pursuit of holiness, we started that yesterday here at the church. There were a whole lot of people that, that came and they worked very hard both inside and out of the church to prepare the church for, for the year. And if you missed out on it, don't think, ha I missed out. I don't have to do that for another year. You know what? We'll let you come clean anytime you feel the need. Or pull weeds or, or a vacuum or, or whatever you want to do. We'll let you do that. But today we want to think about holiness. And what does it mean to pursue holiness? Because you and I, we have to choose to be active in our pursuit. It's the choice is yours. And it's mine. And so today we'll talk about that. We'll also wrap ourselves a little bit around the Wesleyan heritage that we share. Today we're going to be reading for 1 Timothy. And we'll read in 1 Timothy there in the second chapter, verses 1 through 6. And we know that the Apostle Paul is encouraging this young man in his faith and his role, and his responsibility in ministry. And so I offer to you the Word of God. And I invite you to to share with me in its reading. If you brought your Bibles from home, or if you would like to follow along in the Pew Bible, I'll be reading out of the NIV translation. And I urge you then, first of all, that requests and prayers and intercession and thanksgiving be made for everyone. For kings and for all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives and, and this is important for us today. In all godliness and holiness. This is good. And it pleases God our Savior. Who wants all men to be saved. And come to the knowledge of him. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Who gave himself as a ransom for all. The testimony given in its proper time. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
a few years ago, there was a game that came out. Actually, it, came, it hit the market in 79, and at its height, which was in 1984, it sold, there were 20 million board games sold. And maybe you, you own this game if you're a board game player. It was so popular when I was in high school, and it, was called, it is called Trivial Pursuit. You know it? Um, Trivial Pursuit. It's, it's, a, it's a game that tests your knowledge. It, it, it's like watching Wheel of, it's like playing Wheel of Fortune, you know, on a board game. And, and it, tastes, it tests your knowledge of, of just general things and of, of, of popular items, of kind of cultural things of the day. And it's broken down into six categories. Geography and entertainment and history and art and leisure and science and nature and, and sports and leisure. I always thought that's funny. You put sports and the word leisure together, but um, that's how it did. And so you play this game and... and Ultimately, you find out how smart you are. Now, I have always thought that it has a very odd name, Trivial Pursuit, because I don't think there's anything trivial about pursuing knowledge, do you? And that's, what, that's ultimately what the game was all about. It was, it was really to help you or to help the participant gain knowledge, um, honed in their skills to become more aware, to think, and to actively then try to learn more. And isn't that what we are always doing in life? We're always pursuing something. And what we pursue in life, we at times may call it trivial, but overall, we don't. You know, we, we pursue knowledge. At some points in our lives, we pursue our dreams. We pursue relationships. We set goals, and then we pursue our goals. But then we have this other list of things that you might put on trivial, like we pursue a certain car. Or because it is really needful, sometimes we just pursue trying to get our dentures to fit, right? Or we pursue um, a certain type of property or, or, um, or for People right now, as they prepare to graduate, they're just pursuing that degree, that diploma. So we pursue things in life. But you and I, we are Christians, and we've come here to worship a God who's holy. And so, in the very essence of who you and I are as Christian believers, we also understand that the biggest pursuit for us in our relationship with God and out of our relationship God, with God is the pursuit of holiness. And to pursue holy means that you and, and that I, that we as believers, we're actively striving to be more like God throughout our whole being. Through all that we are, it, it's a continual active participation in the pursuit of holiness. Now, the root of of holiness, as you know, is a simple word, holy. And that's a word that's familiar to us. This morning, we sang hymn number 64, Holy, Holy, Holy. Um, Pastor Albert and I, this morning, we we've, have read to you from the Holy Bible. Uh, last or next week, when we come together, we'll participate in Holy Communion. And the third person of the Trinity, we identify and we know as the Holy Spirit. I mean, holy, that very word means to, to be divine or becoming divine or to be of God. Holy. And so sometimes as believers, it's furthest from our way of thinking to understand that we could actually be holy. And there are times that we're even threatened with that whole idea of holiness because holiness seems to be something that's unattainable to us, doesn't it? I mean, you always ask me, how are you today, right? And what do I always say? I'm trying to be good because I'm always pursuing it. I've never, I'm yet to achieve it, but I'm trying. And that's how holy, holiness is. We're striving for it. We're, we're trying for it. We're, we're seeking to become more holy holy and it's not something that's beyond our ability or God would not ask it of us it's something that is 
a part of who you and I can be. You know, sometimes we tend to find holiness as something that we feel rather than fact. But it's more than just a feeling. It's a way of life. It's who you and I are. It's, it's what God calls us to pursue, to pursue holiness. And Pastor Albert read to us from Peter. And there he read to us uh, that you and I are to be holy as God is holy. And we hear the words of the Apostle Paul to Timothy saying, Hey, Timothy. Lives in all godliness and holiness. He's calling Timothy to live a life of, of holiness, of godliness. And the way we pursue holiness in our life is to become partners in the pursuit with the Holy Spirit. Because God has given us the third person of the Trinity. And, and you know, the Holy Spirit is an incredible, incredible divine help for us at all times in our life and one of the divine ways that the holy spirit works in our life is to awaken us to the whole life of jesus so that the whole life of jesus is introduced into the wholeness of who we are so that the whole love of god is shed abroad in our hearts and our lives and our minds and continually you and i are are influenced to be more like God. That is to be holy. To pursue holiness. It's, it's, having, it's the gift of having a glimpse of the Father's heart. Holiness. Because holiness is God's goal for us. But holiness is the character of God. And you and I, we have the personal responsibility as followers and disciples of Christ to pursue holiness. I mean, holiness, when we speak about it in, in God's terms, it is God's changeless nature. It's hol holiness. And it's, and it's a part of who God is that is presented to us as his promise that you and I too can have a new nature. That we can have holy ways. I mean, holiness is the attribute of God that you and I can have a, have a part in. It is the integrity of who God is that brings to us integrity in our own being. And God never needs, God never needs to be reminded to be good or to be loving or to be faithful or to be kind. God never needs that because the essence of who God is is he's holy. But you and I, we do need it. We need it. And pursuing holiness is the exact opposite of to keep on sinning. Because holiness and sin, they are not compatible. You have to let go of sin and allow holiness to progressively destroy the sin and then fill the broken, weakened, damaged area of our lives so that we're healed and we experience holiness. And it is as you and I pursue holiness that the character and the consistency of godly ways continually grow into our being. But we have to pursue it. And so, Pastor Albert read to us this morning from 1 Peter, and he read to us words like this. As he who called you is holy, be holy. Be holy in all that you are. In all your conduct, in all your ways. For it is written. You shall be holy, for I am holy. Now really, one of the people within our Christian heritage that helps us identify with the pursuit of holiness is John Wesley. The father of the Methodist movement. And John Wesley was a man who sought holiness and to become transformed by holiness throughout all of his days. And the results were faith building and incredible. In the hearts and the lives of men and of women and of youth and of children. I mean, and the, 
the result of this pursuit of holiness on a huge scale brought about the whole Methodist movement in reality. And in 1726, John Wesley, he was a student at Lincoln College. He was there, and Lincoln College is a part of Oxford. He was pursuing his master's degree in ordination in the, the Church of England. And it was while he was there that he was elected to be a fellow of Lincoln College. And that was a person with teaching, responsibili uh, teaching responsibilities and, and to become a mentor to the students. And one of the ways that he mentored the students was in the faith. And he took a small group of, of men and experienced life through faith in Christ with these, this small group. One in the group was his own brother Samuel. And within the group, they, had a, they would discuss scripture. They would authentically offer who they were to each other. And they pursued holiness together. And Wesley came to understand as well as the small group of men did, that holiness as a complete yielding, complete yielding, one's life to God, completely. And it's a complete in, um, a desire to become more like Christ in our hearts and in our actions. And one of the ways we live out that holiness is in our acts of compassion and in our resolutions to live one's life to the glory of God. And so I want you to journey with me. With Adam Hamilton. To a room at Lincoln College. And this room at Lincoln College may have not been the exact room. That John Wesley and these gentlemen met in. Or it may have been. We don't have exact understanding of where that was. But the room's been set up. To be like it would have been when these men were gathering in their pursuit of holiness. We're sitting in the John Wesley room at Lincoln College, a room that's been designed to appear as it would have appeared in the early 1700s when John Wesley would have used this room or a room like it as his own study after he'd been appointed as a fellow of Lincoln College. Charles and two of his young friends were gathering together weekly in order to strive to grow more serious in their faith and John became their mentor. They would gather together in each other's rooms and during the week they would study the classics and uh, pursue the uh, quest for more knowledge but on Saturdays, and particularly on Sundays, they would gather together in the room to discuss books on divinity that they'd been reading together so that they could grow in their faith, uh, bringing together knowledge and vital piety. Uh, they also committed to gather on Sunday at the church to receive the Eucharist. And so weekly they received the Eucharist, something that was most unusual in, uh, in that period of time, and, uh, and then would study together. The four of them, and you can imagine them sitting around a room like this, the four of them gathered to pray, to ask the state of their souls, to strive to grow in their capacity to imitate Christ, to grow in holiness. By 1730, they were also visiting the prisons. One in their group had said they thought they should visit the prisons and to care for the prisoners, as Jesus uh, says in Matthew's Gospel. And so they began visiting the prisons. Following that, they began serving the poor. Uh, they began collecting the excess funds that they had, not much, but what they had to be able to give to the poor. They worked with children who were impoverished, and, and this became a lifelong endeavor for Wesley to be concerned for children who live in poverty. And, and, uh, and it was at this time, Wesley had already previously uh, not cut his hair because he couldn't afford a barber. But now that he had a salary, he could afford a barber, but he chose to give away the money from, uh, that he would have paid for a barber to help the poor. And so... Wesley, uh, Wesley grew his own long hair, something many chided him for, uh, as a way of giving what he would have spent on his haircuts to help the poor. And, and so this is what was happening in this group. They were seeking to grow in faith. They were pursuing godliness and holiness. And, uh, and, uh, and increasingly, year by year, a more rigorous approach to the Christian life. So that added to serving the poor uh, began to be two days of fasting during the week. 
and they would fast until 3 in the afternoon. And to that was added the practice of waking early in the morning at 4 or sometimes at 5 in the morning to spend time in prayer. So there was reading the Bible. There was gathering together, and they gathered together almost daily. There was, uh, there was inquiring as to the state of their soul. There was taking the Eucharist every week. There was serving the poor, visiting the prisons. Uh, and, and all of this uh, earned them the moniker among those who were their detractors, who were a little nervous about these people who seemed to be hyper-religious. Uh, the monikers that came were things like uh, the Bible Moths and, and the Godly Club. Well, these were among the first names that were, that were thrown out to make fun of these serious and devout Christians. And by 1732, another name was added to that, looking at their methodical approach to the faith and, and, and a previous group of, of folks that were somewhat uh, separatists. Uh, they were called Methodists. Well, I cut my hair, but um, that doesn't mean I'm not still pursuing holiness. It just means I think I look a lot better with shorter hair. But John Wesley, he believed that the very meaning of pursuing holiness was really for us within us the recovery of God's image that God has for us that he wants us to experience and encounter through his Holy Spirit and so as Adam Hamilton helped us understand in the pursuit of holiness there was the thoughtful recollection and discovery of who are we how does the image of God dwell within us? And how can we pursue to live out the knowledge that God is a God who's holy? And so they did such things as experience time of prayer and of worship and to participate in the sacraments and spend time in Scripture. And they chose to serve other people. And those were the tools that the Holy Spirit used within the heart of the believers that were called Bible moths and Methodists to really help them in their means of pursuing and understanding holiness. And John Wesley, he believed that the goal of the Christian life fully was that that 1 Peter tells us about. It was that which the Apostle Paul encouraged Timothy about. The goal of the Christian life is to be holy. It's God is holy. And it's to be consumed with the love of God and the love of other people. It's to live out what Jesus taught. And it is to avoid evil. It's to do good always and everywhere. And it's to preserve the practices of God so that we have a, a deepening love for the one who loves us, God. And so pursuing holiness... It's honestly saying to God, take me, Lord, my heart, my life, my all, and make me what you want me to be. Now hear those words. To pursue holiness is to honestly say to God, from your heart, from your lips, from your mind, from your total being, take me, Lord. My heart, my life, my all, and make me what you want me to be. God is in, he is in the business of taking our hearts and taking our lives and restoring us in holiness. Holiness is obtainable. It is a gift that God desires and wants us to participate in and to experience. It's his influence that he wants us to have. Because he's not a selfish God. He's a God that has divine purpose. And he wants us to experience his divinity in our lives. In a, in a very real and personal and life-changing and life-giving way. So that you and I experience the abundance of the life that he desires for us. And so somewhere in our lives, you and I, we have to sit back. We have to ask ourselves the question. Where are we in our pursuit of holiness? Are we 
plain, trivial pursuit with holiness? Or are we making it our life's way and our life's goal? So I ask you this morning, where are you? Where are you? For God says, be holy as I am holy. Will you pray with me? So, Father, we have to honestly say we, are, we, are, we don't always act in your holiness. and We don't always allow your character to mold and shape our character. But, Father, today, open the eyes of our hearts to the partnership you have with us, with your Holy Spirit. And, Father... Create within us a desire of holiness. If that's your desire today, I want you to to pray this prayer with me. You can pray it silently or, or verbally. But pray the prayer. Take me, Lord. My heart. My life. My all. And make me what you want me to be. Father, you hear the cry of our heart. And we thank you. It's in your holy name we pray and together we say, Amen. This morning our closing hymn is number 402. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. And you'll know that. The third verse of the song says, Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart. And so offer this as a dedication to the Lord out of a response of of the prayer that possibly you've prayed this morning. Because as you and I offer our hearts and open our lives to Him, He is a God who is faithful to meet us at the point of where we are and take us beyond where we ever thought we could be. As we close this morning... And singing this song of invitation, I invite you to become a part of this church family. If you've never received and accepted and professed your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, but yet you're at that point in your journey, we invite you to become a part of the church family on your profession of faith. And if you've not been baptized, to be baptized. Uh, If you'd like to become a part of this church family by transferring your membership from another church family, we'd love to receive you. Or if you want to be in a time of prayer or be prayed with, we're here for you today. I invite you to stand and join with us as together we sing, Lord, um, I want to be a Christian.
want to introduce you to the ones that will be baptized in the second service and become a part of the church family. Uh, Pastor Zach's been discipling them for several months on Wednesdays. And this is, is Jessica Baldwin, Theo Hamron, and Brittany May. <laughs> and so we want to introduce them to you if you're unable to be a part of that service and, and offer you the opportunity to join with us as we pray for them. So will you pray with me for these three? Father, as a church family, we surround Brittany and Jesse and Theo with your love. And we pray for them as they pursue holiness in their lives. As they make their commitment for Christ, their personal confession that you are Lord and Savior of all that they are. As they seek to experience the power of baptism and the, the reality of your presence for their lives. We thank you for Pastor Zach and for his role and responsibility in guiding them and, and offering to them an incredible future through you. And we as their church family celebrate and we support them in prayer. If you will agree with me, will you say with me, in your name I pray. And together we say, Amen. Amen. All right, well they're going to be out in the narthex, so if you want to see them right quick, um, if you're not able to come over, you invite you to do so. But here's the secret. If you make it all the way to the third service time, they're going to have a cake, and they'll let you have part of their cake. <laughs> but don't, don't go cut the cake before and it's out there. Don't cut it yet, all right? <laughs> all right? Well, we invite you now to go in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, knowing that our God is a God who's holy, and he asks us to be holy. And he's our God who's faithful, faithful for our past and this present moment and for our future. And remember, you and I are not simply called to come to church. Who are you and I called to be? To be, be the, the church. church. To be holy. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today.